What's up guys, this is Drew. We are here at IBIS headquarters today with the brand new Ripley. Um, we just got done riding this bike. We had a blast, sat through a short presentation where we learned a little bit about the bike. Um, but today we're gonna mostly talk about the performance of the bike, how it did on the trail, um, where we think it really excels, and who the ideal consumer might be for this bike. So, you may look at this bike and think it's taken some cues from, you know, the recently released Ripmo. It definitely has. This bike has seen a lot of revisions in its fourth iteration. It is much longer. It's got a slacker head tube angle, uh, a significantly steeper seat tube angle, um, beautiful lines, and it is as stiff as the Ritmo, but in a 120, 130 millimeter travel package. This bike, as you see here, is well under 30 pounds. It's in the upper 30s, and depending on your build, tire spec, etc., you could probably get it even a little lighter than that. So the goal for Ibis was to create a bike that's as well-rounded and capable on a variety of terrain conditions as their consumers who've grown to love the Ripley would expect. They've done this while adding a little bit of range to the descending, confidence, um, body position, and even to the climbing performance of the bike. It maintains the use of the DW Link suspension design. It's, again, it's 120 mil rear travel. It does have a you know, pro pedal switch on the shock. We found ourselves only using it on road climbs to get back up, you know, long grunts on the pavement before descending into the trails. But on the dirt, we kept the shock pretty much open the whole time. It, it performed very well. It was a super efficient bike. Um, and then we didn't have to run the risk of, you know, forgetting it or getting into last minute bits of terrain where we didn't expect there to be a short descent and um, you know, keep the shock fully active for the downhills, but still efficient and supple on the climbs. Um, one of the big things you'll notice looking at the frame is the reach. It has been extended across all sizes. Um, our size large was definitely reminiscent of you know, some of the longer travel, more enduro all mountain bikes uh, of today rather than a, you know, a cross country machine or something that's real short and cramped. Um, that combined with the steeper seat tube angle really allowed us to get in a climbing position that was efficient, it was comfortable, the seat tube wasn't too steep to where we had a lot of weight on our hands, um, and with you know the 185 dropper post, we really were able to drop the seat out of the way and navigate some, some terrain that was you know well beyond what we'd normally take a 120 millimeter bike on. Um, 130 mil fork, you can run that up to, up to a 140, you know, if that's kind of your, your style. We would probably go that route depending on, you know, where we were riding this bike. Um, but it would still give you a really good feel even with a 144. Um, you know, moving on, one of the other things that, that IBIS has been able to do by get, getting rid of the eccentrics in this uninterrupted seat tube is they've raised the bottom bracket actually. Uh, I think it was about five millimeters. So by raising this bottom bracket just a little bit, they were able to increase the rider's ability to pedal over chunky and uh, uneven terrain, which a lot of bikes, you know, going lower and lower is a bit of an issue, right? And, um, you know, by lowering the, the overall height of the bike, such a short seat tube, a 185 dropper, you can get the rider's center of gravity lower and not have to rely on a low bottom bracket to do that. So they've raised it, gives you more pedaling, more clearance, but you still have a low center of gravity. Um, frame stiffness was really impressive on the trail. Um, you know, whether it was from the front end or the rear triangle, you know, there's a lot of different tests you can do on the trail to see how a frame feels. And there were sections of trail we rode yesterday up here in Santa Cruz where, you know, I would intentionally kick the back end out and slam it into corners and this thing would just drift and then hook right up as it, it hit the little you know banked berm or wall on a trail and it was really fun to ride. Um, front end stiffness was the same. It was not abusive, it didn't beat us up. You know, we were out for I think well over two and a half hours and uh, you know it was comfortable. We rode through some pretty gnarly, you know, really rooty and some rocky sections. Like we did we did our best to find the roughest stuff we could here in Santa Cruz and um, you know, the bike held up. It, it felt a little bit overwhelmed when you really got it in over its head. Again, taking it in a terrain well over the 120 mark of, of where you, know, you would expect a bike like this to feel uncomfortable. The geometry and position on the bike you know, were never an issue. It just kind of came down to the fact that we were out of travel and you know, when you're bouncing through big holes and, and ruts, you, know, you just can't make up for not having any more travel, but um, 
Aside from those extreme situations, this bike was a blast to ride. We spent a lot of time on some of the, you know, mellower grade, you know, switchbacks and chicane corners and, you know, the stiff platform, the, the reach, the short chain stays all made this bike super playful. It cornered like it was on rails and, um, you know, I just can't get over the fact of how much fun we had on this bike, how efficient it is on the pedaling and um, just we're really excited to take one home and spend more time on it on our local trails. But uh, for now, that's where we're at. Really excited about the new Ripley and hoping to put more time on it back home. Thanks, guys.